First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, Rechach Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. And Shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. All we got is hope, you know, which hope is faith. That's all we have. Don't worry about the things that you see. And don't worry about, you know, people that's prospering for the moment. Because as the scripture I'm going to get next, there is an end to this. There is an end to this. And our expectation shall come. So it says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why do he yet hope for? So, you know, you see things, even though it's crazy, this is how you know that the Lord, this is some divine intervention going on because the world is literally crumbling and people are still rejoicing. You know, people still have hope in this place. So if the Lord don't give you the eyes to see and ears to hear, you know, you're just going to be hopeful in this place, prospering and filling your own belly until you be destroyed. So it's the things that you do see as the Lord is telling you. But if we hope for that, we see not, then then do we with patience wait for it. And that's our expectation. So the things in this world is temporary. Everything that you see is temporary. Your life is temporary. If you have faith in a, in a um, 100 percent understanding of, you know, death, life understanding because the scripture said um one of my favorite scriptures in jeremiah 9 it said you know be happy that you understand of and know of me and by understanding and knowing the lord you know his judgments and you know his word you know everything when it comes to the word and understanding that you're born and then you die now, in the end, Matthew 16, 28, it says some of us should not taste death. You know, because we at the end, because the next thing, as it say in Revelation 20 and 14, death and hell should be cast into the lake of fire. It's going to be no more death after this point. So we are finally in that time. That's our hope. Everything in this world brings death. We're trying to escape death. So going back to the mindset of when you're born and you grow up, you know that one day you're going to have to die. And people are fearful of dying when you don't have understanding, but it really comes to faith. At the end of the day, ain't none of us died, remembered that we died, went into the spirit world and, and understand what's going on up there. And we could come down here and tell you what's going on. Everything is contingent which means dependent on everything is dependent on faith. All right. Everything. Everything, man. That's why. Oh, no, it's Hebrews. Oops. Mm. But faith without, well, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Do you understand what this scripture is saying? It's nothing else. In wisdom of Solomon 7 and 28, it said for the, for the, um, for the most high love of none, but those that dwell with wisdom. But then you have another scripture that said glory, not in your wisdom. See, when you don't have understanding, you would think that the word is um, counteracting each other. You know, you would think that the word is going against it, going against each other. And that's why you have to know that the Lord is both sides. It's duality to the Lord. Because, yeah, wisdom 
If the Lord dealing with you, you automatically going to have wisdom, but wisdom, just you having wisdom is not, it don't mean nothing at the end of the day. When you come down to Jacob's trouble, when it comes down to a famine in the land, when it comes down to dead bodies dropping everywhere and it just chaos out here, faith, faith, knowing that the Lord is going to come and deliver you because he's, that's what he said, but you have to believe it. So without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to the most high must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, diligently seek him. So that means you're not sitting on your hands. It means you're not doing nothing. It means you're actually doing something for the Lord because you fear. And you also believe that you're going to be rewarded. But, um, but the point is, is that you have to really have that mindset. See faith automatically is going to be tried. How do you know if you have faith, if you're not tried? So, the serious times that we are heading into, your faith is going to be tried. That's what it's all about. The testing of your faith. Is you worthy? Are you going to pass the test, man? I think about these things all the time. That's why if you watch my videos, my videos is morally on this. The mindset, man. I do this to uplift myself and whoever here, because at the end of the day, all we got is our faith in this word. That's it. Literally. If you got money right now, your money ain't going to mean nothing in the days to come. So. Oops. So it said, blessed are the meat for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for right after righteousness, for they should be filled. So the ones who are thirsting and hungering for righteousness is the men of the Lord and the women that believe we are looking forward to the kingdom being changed, that we could be perfect and we can live in harmony. And guess what? The Lord said we're going to be filled. But you have to stand 10 toes down for the Lord. And it said, blessed are they, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the most high. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall call, uh, call the children. They shall be called the children of the most high. Blessed are they which persecute, which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. So these are the attributes of faith. That's why I read this. This is the attribute of faith because we're heading into a time where you're going to have to stand on what you believe right now. You know, we are in the purging process. We know the Lord is purging our impurities. That's why we go through the fire every day. You know, vexation of the spirit, uh, listening to the filthy conversation of the wicked people that you love, don't believe like you, like all these things that the Lord is doing for us is to strengthen us for the times to come. So doing these things, you make yourself a prey <clears throat> as I say in Isaiah 59 and 15, you make yourself a prey when you go after righteousness. So, So it said, let not your heart envy sinners, but be you in the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai all the day long. Man, I'm more tongue twisted than usual. Let me read that again. Let not your heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai all the day long. And that is wisdom. <laughs> That is wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times and the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Isaiah 33 and six. So those things is what's going to keep you in the days to come. 
And it don't matter how many times we talk about this, it's going to come a day when everything that we say is going to hit. Then it ain't going to be, damn, dog, all you do is talk about is this. All, all you want to do is talk about the Karagma. All you want to do is talk about Jacob's trouble. Do you understand how important those things is? Those things have to happen before paradise. That's what you got to understand. These things have to happen before paradise. And if you had the eyes to see which the Lord is the one to have to give you, you would see it plainly. That is right around the corner. It said, for surely there is an end. See, it's an end of all this bullshit that we go through. It's an end of looking at these non-melanated people running the world in wickedness. It's an end to disobedient women. It's an end to badass kids. It's an end to you being imperfect. That's what we're looking forward to. It's an end to wickedness, man. For the Israelites. The nations ain't going to never be perfect. But they're going to get in line because they're going to get the rod of iron. That's actually how we shall say it. You know, if you hold fast to that which you have, which is this faith, then you will rule the nations with a rod of iron. They're going to get, they have to learn our law. So the world is ain't going to know no more war, as I say in Isaiah 2. And the world is going to be how the Lord envisioned it. But we had to go and understand this side of the spectrum. And guess what? Salakya Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for all my transgressions. I do not want to go through this ever again. And guess what? We ain't going to have to go through it ever again. And it says, and your expectation shall not be cut off. Now, let's get into the word expectation. Everybody should know what expectation means. But let's get into Hebrew. It's tha kwa And it's cord. And a cord, what, what is a cord? Something that binds you. And what binds us to the Lord is our faith. Hope, expectation, hope, ground of hope, things, hope for outcome. That's what. So it's a process to get to an outcome. So for you new covenant demons saying that we are already in a new covenant, what process did we go through to get the kingdom and Yahweh Shai reigning with us? And why we're not in our land? Why is Esau Edom still ruling the world? Why are we still uh, in the dangers of being Karagma? All right. Being digitally implanted to eat. This is what's coming to the world. But the Lord said, my servant shall eat and my servant shall drink. And then the root word is kwa, and it's to wait, look for, hope, expect. So we expect everything in this word to come to pass. The bad and the good. So the Lord also said this. What the hell? Oh, here we go. Really? Service unavailable? Huh? Yeah. See, I used to get mad when things like this happen, but I just know that you're doing right. You're doing right. I'm going to have to get it over here, so just say the same thing. Take an address to... All right, let me highlight it. Oh, you can't highlight this? About to say. So it said, Doth said the Lord to Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I was going to give to Israel. Moreover, I would take back to myself their glory. And I will give to them the everlasting habitations, which I prepared for Israel. The tree of life shall give them frag, uh, fragrant perfume and they shall neither toil nor become weary. Go and you receive. Pray that your days may be few, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Be on the watch. 
And that's that's what it's all about. The Lord already have a kingdom prepared for us. Matter of fact, let me back it up. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so it said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in the most high, believe also in me. This is Yahweh Shah, our savior talking. In my father's house are many mansions. Where do the father dwell? He dwells in heaven. All right. So what is the mansions? That's planets, man. Now, that's so far fetched for your eye or your mind to even perceive. But you're dealing with Yahweh. All right. The creator of all things, the one who created our savior and through our savior created everything that you see, even you. But you dealing with it's nothing impossible to the Lord. Shit, look what Esau doing. Esau technology is out of worldly, but he gets that from Satan. Who created Satan? Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Who gives Satan's orders? Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. So, planets, man. We're going. Some men is going to be able to inhabit planets, man. And I believe this. I don't care what nobody say. And it says, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. That's the kingdom, man. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. This is our hope. We understand that we got to go through the fiery trial. The scriptures call it the straight gate, which we've been on. Ever since you put your hand to the plow, you've been on the straight gate. Now we're just waiting for the expectation, the outcome, our hope to play out, man. But faith is the only thing that's going to get you to the end goal. Faith, faith is this. I wanted to end it on that. Cause that was beautiful to end it on John 14, but I got to get this because it's all about faith, man. So. It said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast of out fear because fear have torment. He that fear of is not made perfect in love. And the Lord said he loved us. Matter of fact, read the next scripture. We love him because he first loved us. So you got to understand. I should have started. From, let me read 17. Matter of fact, I'm going to read it all together. That's what I meant to start at. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So the way that we walk, we walk by faith, not by sight, as I say in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. We walk by faith, not by sight, which means you walk with a different type of confidence. You walk really believing that Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah is going to be for you. So we're going to be bold in the day of judgment. That means if death is standing in front of you, guess what? You're going to take it. And it's not you that do it. It's the Lord's spirit that dwell up inside you. That's why you don't need to worry. See, we, we got to, you got to continue to build yourself up in these scriptures, man. This is all we have. And guess what? Satan always around the corner trying to knock you off your faith. Try to get you, try to bring more vexations in your life to get you to, you know, just knock you off your path, man. After I do this video, Satan going to do something. He do it every single time. But being able to counteract it is by having faith in these scriptures, man. And it said, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear have torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. For we love him because he first loved us. And when you go to John 15 and 16, he said, he have not, we have not chosen him, but he have chosen us. All right. So the faith is what's going to sustain you. Nothing more is important. So pray without season, repent, seek you the Lord while he may be found. The Lord is graceful and merciful. Shalom.